first of all, thank all of you for coming out. Um, before I take any questions, I'd just like to uh, say a few things about my friend, Mark Turgeon. Um, Turgeon, good friend, teammate, coaching peer, mentor. Um, I came to Maryland because of him. I wanted to work alongside him and, and learn from him. Nobody wanted to win more than Turge. He won here at Maryland. He won in a tough conference, and he won a lot. I can't speak for him, um, but I know that our team will continue to follow the direction that his leadership provided for so many years. And, um, you know, that started today. I didn't expect to be in this position, um, but I'm ready to take on the responsibility of helping lead this team with the rest of our staff. I promised Turge and I promised Damon that I would do that, and I owe it to this team. So that's our coach's mindset, and um, we still feel like we're we're close. Obviously, there are no more victories, but um, you know, we feel like we we tighten up and fine tune a few areas. We we can still accomplish what we want to accomplish. So, um, I know a lot of you will might have a few questions about the coaching change, and I'll, I'll try my best to answer those, but understand my focus is also and our staff's focus is on our players and, and making sure they receive the support um, that they need at this time. Questions, Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support, Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Maryland's legal newspaper has named the Jacklitz Law Group the very best, best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs, the Jacklitz Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. Um, just kind of looking at the 48 hours between now and then, what, what did you prioritize and just trying to stabilize this thing for the, the players? And, and what was your approach in the last two days with them? It seemed like a lot longer than 48 hours. <laughs> you know, um, you know, you don't, that's not in the coaching manual. That's not in the coaching playbook. You know, it's, it's not situations like that. And so we got the information had a chance to visit with Turge. Um, there was a lot of emotion. There was a lot of emotion, and rightfully so. And um, to the point of we were supposed to practice earlier in the day, and we pushed it back to give our guys a chance to digest. And we came back in, and um, I thought for what we got accomplished in terms of getting the guys to move up and down the court, was good, but more importantly, we had a chance to sit down and talk and everyone had a chance to express their feelings and, and what they were thinking. And we need to continue to do that because um, it's a tornado whirlwind of emotions and they vary and it will continue. And that's just, that's part of life. And so we just gotta make sure we can continue to address that. Um, we came back the next day and I thought we had a really good practice. Um, the energy level was good, guys were spirited and there was something where we, we felt like it was a good day for us. You know, today we didn't come out and do the things necessary to give ourselves a chance to win the game in terms of making enough plays. But I thought there was some fight. And, you know, we've got to continue to build upon that. So to answer your question, we as a staff just tried to be supportive of our guys, let them know that we're there for them, also try to implement the game plan <laughs> about what we were trying to accomplish and, and do out on the court. And, you know, that's, that's been our focus, and that will continue to be our focus as we move forward. Uh, it's kind of a two-parter here. Just when you heard the news, when you found out that Turgeon was stepping down, just what were your initial reactions? And also, what was the conversations like between the two of you um, before you took on the head coaching role? My initial reaction was – Complete and utter shock, <laughs> you know, absolutely um, shocked. And then as we continue to talk and, and things of that nature, um, you know, he, he, you go through this and you go through a lot. Our families go through a lot. 
and it gets tough at times. You know, there's no, no secret. It gets tough. And um, he just made the decision that he felt was best for himself, for his family, but more importantly for this team. You know, he, he, he thought that our team needed um, a different voice. And, you know, that was one of the lasting things that he said to me. He was like, Danny, we're close. You know, we got to fine tune some areas and then we can we can string together some games. And I, I think a new voice can can help move in that direction a lot quicker. And so to me, that was extremely unselfish piece for him to 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 recognize that in his eyes, but also to follow through with it. Um, but that's the charge on that. Might be a little early to ask this, but do you plan on communicating with them throughout the season, or is this something better where everybody goes their own way here? No, I'll, I'll talk to them. <laughs> yeah, we'll stay in touch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just curious kind of um, how the team took it, you know, what, what their emotions have kind of been like over the past you know, 24, 48 hours. It's, it was hard. A lot of emotion. You know, these guys came to Maryland to play for Turge, right? He signed their scholarship papers. He signs our checks. He hired us as a staff. And so, it was, yeah, it was extremely hard um, in, in terms of just a lot of emotion. And it was – depends on how you look at it, but it was more so a lot of love – with that emotion, like thank you for the opportunity, the players or the staff or Coach Turge, you helped make me a better person. You helped make me a better man. You helped me mature in my early years as a young man. So you, you go through all those emotions. And so obviously the guys that have been here the longest, um, probably the, the most shook in regards to when that decision was made. But they also know that they have to be resilient because that's something Turge talks about all the time. So, like I said, just a whirlwind of emotions, and they'll continue to be a whirlwind of emotions. Um, I, I think they did a really good job today of, of coming in when we had our walkthrough earlier before the game of uh, being locked in and, and, and understanding what we were trying to accomplish game-wise game, game -wise in terms of putting in the game plan and following through. Hi, Coach. Got a question about today's game. You know, obviously, Martinez went down early, and we saw a bit more of Marcus Dockery today. Mm -hmm. Is he someone that you foresee uh, spending more time uh, on the court? Yeah, I think Doc has put himself in a situation where, you know, um, I was not here with Doc his freshman year. Um, but by all accounts from everyone on our staff, he's really worked hard to improve. And, and put him in a situation where we thought he's been practicing really well. And the thought process was to go into the game and, and give him some minutes. Obviously, with Ian going down, um, those minutes got extended a little bit. Um, but I do think Doc came in and, uh, you know, gave us really good nine minutes um, from not playing to, to being out there in the fire today. Hey, Coach, I know that every coach kind of has their uh, kind of opinions and things they'd like to do when they see a roster. Just when you see this roster and some of the things that you've done in your past stops, how do you start working in maybe some of your ideas in, in mid-season where these guys haven't been exposed to it? Well, I understand and our staff understands that, you know, we talk about it, we'll continue to say it changes hard. And – there's some things that we're going to massage in as we continue to move forward, but it can't be a stop cold turkey. We're going to all this now, right? And so the thought process is we continue to massage in and then over the break, we'll try to implement a little bit more, um, but it's not gonna be something where it's just complete wholesale brand new system because we want to make sure that our guys, when they're out there, there is a comfort level with what we need to execute offensively and defensively. And just back to today's game, did you think that um, Q and, and Reese got enough touches in like a scoring threatening position or would you have liked to have seen more? Um, you guys don't know me that well. 
right? And so we're going we're to go through uh, a learning process. Um, but we have to do a better job as a team in terms of when we get our scoring opportunity of cashing in. Across the board, we didn't do that today. I am a big believer in paint touches. I am a big believer in ball reversal. Um, I thought paint touches led us to 22 free throw attempts. We want that to be part of our formula for scoring points. Paint touches, putting pressure on the team, getting into the bonus before our opponents, to get to the double bonus. And I thought there were periods of time in the game that we did a good job of that, then we went away from it, and then we tried to come back to it. We just have to be a lot more consistent. And that, that's my message to the guys and our staff. We want paint touches. We want the ball to move. When the ball moves, it forces long closeouts, meaning if the ball's on this side of the court, the defense usually loads up on the side of the ball. We get it to the other side of the court. That means they're running out to you. It's a great time to drive a closeout and try to get another paint touch. So those are things that we'll continue to work on with our guys, but I think they're very important. Um, and that's part of what we will continue to emphasize is paint touches and ball reversals or ball swings, whatever adjective that you would like to, to put on that. A couple of things. One, do, do you have an update on Ian Martinez at this point? Do I have an update on Ian Martinez? No, I'm not a doc, but when I went out there, he looked out of it. I'm not a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. But I hit my head on the wood a few times. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, he, yeah. I mean, he came back, you know, we had a couple of aids and, you know, obviously once we get the, uh, you know, word on what the docs say, we'll go from there and obviously follow the protocol that's needed. And, you know, we need him. We need him to come back. He's a dynamic young man. And, um, you know, he'll be back as soon as he can. And obviously, Hakeem had a pretty good game. The rest, the rest of the starting lineup struggled on offense. Do you just kind of chalk that up to it's been a disjointed couple of days and it's an off day for some folks? Or how do you kind of line, line that up in your mind? Didn't play well enough. You know, didn't play well enough. And we shared this with our, with our young men. Nobody's going to feel sorry for us. We, we, we got to figure out a way when we get out there. And Akeem gave us a chance in terms of offensively making shots and, and doing some really good things for us offensively. Um, but, you know, I want him to get to the free throw line, right? He shot the ball well. He did. And we had a lot of guys that didn't shoot it well. We had a lot of guys get to the free throw line. But I, I just think that across the board, those are things that we got to continue to work on. Um, but, yeah, Hakeem offensively, he gave us a chance to, to be in the ball game with how he played. Seven to ten, terrific percentage at any level. Uh, Coach, I, is, I know this has been a hectic time for not only the players, yourself, but I, I also heard that you talk, you got a chance to talk to the parents of the players as well. Uh, just give, uh, you just give, like, give me some detail on like, what you said to them and – just to give them some encouragement moving forward? You know, the, the, just wanted to share with them that nothing changed with how our staff feels about all the young men on our team. We wanted the parents to understand that, um, yes, it was a challenging last couple of days, right? And you compound that with finals coming up, semesters coming to an end. So we just wanted to make sure that, you know, we reached out to them and let them know that we're going to do everything we can to continue to support them in every facet. And if you have anything that you need to share with us about your child that can help us, please do it. And we've got to do the same thing because we're all on the same team in regards to, of helping all of our young people be successful. And just wanted to let them know that they can reach out to us and share different things that are going on. If you, if you have a family member, if you have somebody that's going through a rough patch in your family that might have an effect on your child and our team, Please share that information, and, and, and we'll do the same in, the, in that regard. And so, and it was just basically for me, it was a, a get to know all the parents. You know, I, I had the assistant coach hat on. It wasn't my lane, everybody. I had a few, <laughs> had a few that we were in charge of, but now it becomes a little bit more of the whole group. And so, just wanted to 
um, put my face in front of them and, and let them know that I'm going to continue to follow Church's footsteps and making sure that they're taken care of as best we can and let them know that we love them and, and we want them to be successful young people. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Well played, next.